you ever just sat around and wished that you were some witch squid deep beneath the ocean? So have I. Hello and welcome to Lord of the Board. My name is Sam Smith and today we are going to be learning the strategy of Ursula within the Disney Villainous board game. But before we start, let me go ahead and pave the path for you. First, we're gonna be looking at some of her cards and what tools she has at her disposal to finish her goal. And then we're gonna be looking at her realm and the four locations within it and look at how each of them benefits her in a different way. And then lastly, we're gonna go over three tips and strategies on how to play Ursula better. So with that, let's begin. Divination reads, reveal cards from your deck until you reveal a binding contract. Put that binding contract into your hand and then discard the rest. Divination is great and should be used as soon as possible. On the way of discarding, you are hoping to throw out cards like the crown or the trident. These can be fished out later with the opportunist card. The green binding contract card says, attach binding contract to a hero who is not at Ursula's lair. That hero is defeated when they are moved to Ursula's lair. The green binding contract is what you will want to use to defeat King Triton. There is only one of these in the deck, so keep on to it once you have found it. Grow Giant reads, perform one available action at a location adjacent to Ursula, even if the location is locked. Grow Giant is great for staying versatile with Ursula, and you can use it for fate or gaining power at the palace, and it also gives her the, the ability to gain five power in a turn if used while on the shore. If using it adjacent to Ursula's lair, then the activate ability or maybe the move item seem to be the best options. Whirlpool reads, move a hero to any unlocked location. Whirlpool is the best way to secure binding contract kills, especially the most important kill being King Triton. There are, however, three of these in the deck, so if it is early enough in the game, I would say let it cycle through your deck to get to the Trident and to the Crown sooner. Flotsam and Jetsam have the same ability. They can move a hero from their location to an adjacent unlocked location. Flotsam and Jetsam are the only two allies in Ursula's deck and can be used to get binding contract kills. When drawn, I would play the first on Eric's ship to be ready for Triton and to move him in there to destroy him. And the second, I would place at the shore for more options to kill at Eric's ship, seeing as there is two binding contracts to be used at Eric's ship, as opposed to Ursula's lair and the palace having only one. Change form reads, move the lock token to either Ursula's lair or the palace. Change form is a unique aspect of Ursula where she can move her lock token from one end of the board to the other. In early game, I believe that the palace offers better options to Ursula. So I would use this first thing to begin fading more and collecting more power. The Cauldron reads, activate, gain two power for each binding contract in your realm. Keeping binding contracts on foes instead of defeating them is a good strategy as most of Ursula's fates are just big distractions. Ursula needs a lot of power to win the game, so getting the Cauldron in your realm will be great to hit your goal faster with power. So now that we have looked at the tools and the cards at Ursula's disposal, let's familiarize ourselves with Ursula's realm, starting with the lair. The lair is an okay spot, but I believe it will be one of the least utilized. It is, however, the only spot that contains an activate ability. But when locked, you can still use the card Grow Giant to use that activate ability. 
Eric's ship is a nice spot early game to make use of her discard ability but still be able to fate and slow down your enemies while also being able to cycle through your deck. The Shore is an amazing location that provides good power income and also the ability to use up your cards or discard your cards. This will likely be the spot you will want to spend the most of your time unless a hero is covering the discard ability. In that case, you may want to spend most of your time at Eric's ship to get those discards. The palace starts the game locked for Ursula, but unlocking it can quickly be beneficial as Ursula needs a lot of power mid to late game in order to pull off her objective sooner. It can also be used to position heroes for binding contracts, which can be very useful if you aren't getting any whirlpools or any other ways to move heroes. Now that we have looked at her cards and explored her realm, here are three tips and strategies to help you blow the competition out of the water. At the beginning of the game, utilize Eric's ship and the shore to discard and play cards cycling through your deck in search of the crown and the trident. If you are running low on power, maybe mid to late game you can start cycling between the shore and the palace to start racking up that power and get to your goal sooner. Play the trident on Eric's ship to invoke the summoning of King Triton and use the green contract on him. Once you have moved him to your lair, the trident is already in position for victory. Using change form can actually lock items like the crown or trident to be protected from Ariel's grasp. Items on a locked space cannot be moved under any circumstance. Thank you so much for watching this video today. It has been a blast to make, and I hope that this actually provided some good, useful information for you in the next game that you play as Ursula. But before you go, go ahead and leave a like, as well as comment down below what your favorite Disney villain is. As well as if you wanna see more content like this, go ahead and click that bell notification to be notified when my next video is released. Thank you for tuning in today, and with that, let's drop the beat.